Hello, it's Ian Cameron, Sports Handicapper, and we're going to do our daily MLB Overnight Lines betting segment, uh, taking a look at the games that will be uh, taking place on Sunday, May the 8th, wrapping up the weekend. We've got a few games circled on the Sunday baseball card that I'm going to take a look at. We're going to start by looking at the Philadelphia Phillies, Miami Marlins, and this is quite simple. The Phillies are a team that, you know, are not expected to do a lot, but they've played better uh, a little bit than people expected at 16 and 14. And Aaron Nola is a flat-out bet-on pitcher for me right now. He's been fantastic for the Phillies in his last three starts. He's just been marvelous. 2-0, 0.43 ERA, one run allowed in his last 21 innings of work, four walks, to 21 strikeouts. Just fantastic numbers for Aaron Nola facing a Miami team that he shut out in eight innings last year uh, in his lone start against the Marlins. So I think Aaron Nola is set up to pitch well here against Miami. And on the flip side for the Marlins, you've got Justin Nicolino on the mound. Uh, he's not a guy that I trust a whole lot uh, in his last start. Really struggled. Four runs allowed on seven hits and six innings of work. Not a single strikeout with three walks uh, in that outing for Nicolino. So, you know, it's just a guy that I think at this stage of the career for him, uh, he's just not quite ready yet to be a major league starter. You know, the Phillies, the one concern is that they haven't been great against lefty pitching, but Nicolino, to me, is pretty much a mediocre fringe arm as a lefty right now at the major league level. I, I really would look to back the Phillies here. I mean, you get a pretty good price with them here, plus 110, small underdog price for a pitcher that is in as good form right now as Aaron Nola is. Uh, that could be some value with the Phillies on Sunday uh, against the Miami Marlins. We've also got, got the Milwaukee Brewers taking on the Cincinnati Reds, and boy, uh, I've been really liking the over throughout this series. We've been beating that over drum throughout this Brewers Red series repeatedly and I think that drum has the potential to make some lovely music for us once again and turn some profits uh, on Sunday uh, when these two teams match up. Uh, two offenses in good form right now. The two starters in this matchup definitely are suspect. Junior Guerra, uh, the starter for the Milwaukee Brewers, had his first start of the season last time out against San Francisco, a spot start for him where he allowed four runs uh, on seven hits and six innings of work. Uh, very low, 33% ground ball rate for Junior Guerra. And as I said, these pitchers that have low ground ball rates and are prone to give up fly balls pitching in Cincinnati, that's not a good fit for them. So this could be trouble here for Guerra against the Reds uh, based on his uh, pitching profile uh, going into this start on Sunday. You know, Joey Votto, Brandon Phillips, Jay Bruce, Adam Duvall, number of Reds hitters that are in good form right now. They've scored five or more runs in five of their last six games. I think they could have some success against Guerra. On the flip side, uh, John Lamb will get another spot start for Cincinnati. Again, Brian Price, the manager, has a team that is just ravaged with starting pitching injuries right now. Tons of guys on the DL, so as a result, you got a guy like John Lamb, who, uh, to me, may be not quite ready to be a major league starter, but he's got to be thrust into duty because the uh, infirmary is full uh, with this Cincinnati Reds pitching staff. So here's John Lamb coming off, you know, a decent first start, single run allowed in six innings against San Francisco, but he did allow three walks. Did show some signs of struggling with his control. You know, another issue for me is that his FIP and his ex-FIP stemming from that start against San Francisco, two runs higher than his ERA. That tells me he was a little bit fortunate to pitch as well as he did and really didn't pitch uh, anywhere close uh, to as well as the stats and the numbers that he allowed in terms of runs and ERA would indicate. So, you know, I don't expect either of these starters to eat up innings. And what does that mean? Well, it means you got two of the worst bullpens in Major League Baseball. Milwaukee's ranked 28th. Cincinnati's dead last at 30th. They're going to get a lot of uh, innings late in this game, most likely, uh, and a chance for both of these teams to score runs late. You know, the total sitting at 8.5 and, and 9 right now, It's uh, it depends on where you look, so shop around for the best number, but over the total. Once again, with the Brewers and Reds, makes some sense there. And Arizona taking on Atlanta on Sunday, May the 8th, another interesting matchup here. How about Arizona lefty Patrick Corbin, a guy that's been very disappointing, a guy that I still think has a ton of upside, has got electric stuff. I think he's going to eventually settle in, turn things around, and start pitching better. Maybe a sign of that last time out against Miami where he allowed just three runs in 5.1 innings, and he has pitched better away from Chase Field. His home ballpark, for some reason, has given him problems, but you know, a 2.50 ERA and three road starts for Corbin this season against the Dodgers, San Diego, and Miami. Now he gets to face... 
a pathetic Atlanta lineup. I've said it more than one occasion with Peter on the videos when he's with me, and, and also uh, when I've done the solo videos that Atlanta just can't hit very well. Uh, that's uh, stating the obvious. Uh, and he's dominated the Atlanta Braves, Patrick Corbin, in two starts against them. He's held Atlanta scoreless. Uh, in 13.2 innings of work against Atlanta in his career over two starts. Atlanta this year hitting just 204 against Southpaws and averaging just 2.3 runs per game against lefties. So this should be a start where Patrick Corbin really does turn a corner and maybe uh, puts his uh, best start of the season on the board here. Uh, if he's going to do it, this is going to be the right time to do it, the right opponent uh, to do it for Patrick Corbin to really start to show signs that he's turning things around. Uh, for Atlanta, you've got Mike fulton uh making the start for them. He has never impressed me whatsoever. He doesn't miss many bats. Uh, he doesn't have a lot of deception in his arsenal. He had a 5.71 uh, ERA in 15 starts with Atlanta last year. Uh, he got smashed by uh, in his first start of the 2016 season and his last start against the Mets, allowing four runs on eight hits uh, in just 4.2 innings. Uh, and Fulton Nevich actually is uh, a guy that faced at Arizona twice last season, and it was ugly for him, uh, allowing 11 runs on 17 hits and 10.1 innings of work over those two starts against the Diamondbacks. Atlanta went 0-2 uh, in those games. Uh, so I think Atlanta's lineup, as they've proven in the past, should match up well here against fulton Evich. And you can't worry about betting against Atlanta at home. 1-13 this Atlanta Braves team as of this recording. Uh, at Turner Field this season. That's an embarrassing home record. There's nobody in the building. I mean, there's just uh, it's just a lethargic atmosphere, and Atlanta's played like it. Uh, just one win in 14 home games this season. That is horrendous. Uh, I don't usually like to lay a big chalk price on the road very often, but I think if you're going to do it, uh, in one game and one spot, this is the time to do it with Arizona. Uh, about minus 134, minus 135 right now. To me, that's a reasonable price to lay with Arizona with the better starter and Patrick Corbin, the better bullpen, the better lineup, and the better overall team. So I think Arizona, you know, that's a reasonable price even at minus 134, minus 135 to lay with them there. All right, let's take a look at a couple more, just quick hitter style. Uh, Colorado, San Francisco, first glance with that one. Butler against Samarja, maybe see some runs in that game. Look over the total of eight. Samarja's still a guy that's hot and cold, hasn't really put it all together yet. And Butler, to me, is not a very uh, long-term viable answer as a starting pitcher. So we may see runs there. And maybe look at Seattle uh, against Houston uh, on Sunday, May the 8th. I mean, Hisashi Iwakuma has had some struggles in the past with Houston, but I don't trust Colin McHugh one bit. Regression has hit this guy as I thought it would. I was pretty uh, confident that uh, McHugh could not uh, keep up what he did last season. That was unsustainable from him. He's come back down to earth here in 2016, really struggled. One of many pitchers struggling uh, in this Houston Astros rotation. You can get Seattle right now close to even money, uh, minus 110, minus 105, minus 110 in that range right now. Seattle Mariners might be able to get the victory there uh, in that series finale uh, against the Houston Astros on Sunday. So that will do it for me uh, to t talking about the uh, Sunday uh, MLB slate for Sunday, May the 8th. The overnight lines are available, uh, so you can peruse them now. Uh, at your best convenience. Uh, hope we cash some tickets on Sunday. It's been a very good run with the uh, video picks lately. We're going to look to continue that. Uh, so that'll be it for me. That was the uh, MLB Overnight Line segment for Sunday, May the 8th. I'm sports handicapper Ian Cameron for Sportsbook Review. Check out the website, sportsbookreview.com. I mean, it's got tremendous articles, videos, live odds, everything you could want uh, as a sports better uh, and a, a great resource to help you get the winning information that you need. So I'm sports handicapper Ian Cameron for Sportsbook Review. We'll talk to you next time. Enjoy the games and good luck.